Hi everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass and I'm a targeted individual. It is currently uh, whatever that says 5 something a.m. Saturday the 24th I don't know and uh, the a.m. and my big project is taking apart my laptop. This this is my laptop. Uh, yes, here it is. The fan. Uh, where is it? That part it was really, really dirty and broken. And this thing, uh, the Belkin card thing. All these little pins in here got bent when this thing got jammed in wrong. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, here's the, the, the back case for my thing. Here's uh, more pieces for my laptop. And oh, oh, here's the keyboard. Uh, completely uh, disemboweled in an attempt to clean it and get it to work again. Here's all the screws and all the stuff and the, the hard drive. Oh, where's the hard drive? Here's the hard drive. The hard drive that I bought one of these uh, one of these cheap uh, external drives for 50 bucks because I couldn't. I needed <laughs> I needed a new hard drive and I wanted to keep the uh, the one that I had in an external box. So I bought the external drive and I took the the other hard drive out and I put it in the new hard drive in my computer and the old hard drive in the external box a SATA, uh, this is the little piece that has to go back on the uh, on this Belkin Dinglehofer, I don't think I'm ever going to get it to eject the card again but anyway uh, that's what I'm doing now trying to fix my my <laughs> poor laptop this thing has been through um, okay, the first laptop I had, they broke. As soon as I went to the hotel, they did something to it, put water or something, you know. The second one I bought, I paid $450 for it. It's the most money I've ever spent on a laptop. And it was an Acer, it was on sale, and it's lasted all these years, despite the more gallons, despite the electromagnetic zapping, despite the microwave, whatever, despite the, the, the kid who breaks the lap, everybody's computer who used it once and broke it, despite the, <laughs> the 10 moves and the dropping it a few times and the carrying it in the bag and, and all the other insanity, lugging it around. I mean, I don't know if you can see at all. Let me see. Uh, I don't know if you can see the way this stuff is is corroded and, and you know everything is anyway there was so much more gallons and crap because they sprayed the spray into our room it was like a mist and the mist was painful and it stung your skin and the creatures would biogenesis out of them that means a living creature written from genetics code uh, foregoes the egg, the larval, the infant, the whatever stage and becomes comes out, emerges as a fully grown adult creature. This is biogenesis, that's what I call it. Uh, Morgellons is capable of fostering this along with the genetic changes required in order to have you have that kind of stuff happen to you. You need particular genetic sets inside of you in order for these things to work. Uh, there's genes that allow this. It's pretty serious stuff and you know you could use it to make hearts and livers and lungs and eyes and whatever but they're using it to play pestilence and bugs and kill us all off with depopulation. Anyway, uh, I think this video might be upside down. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. God bless you all. Uh, please say a prayer for us. We're in the middle of this crazy housing thing, and uh, Petra is, is sleeping. Oh, she's so wonderful, and I love her so. And I realized that you know, I was so okay. I was so angry and frustrated, and trying to get her to listen to 
you know, the facts, what I understand about the law, and, you know, that there's no defense for holdover, and, uh, you know, the whole way it works, everything. And, um, and she wouldn't listen. She would yell at me and scream at me, no, 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 I gotta, I gotta feel good, I gotta have some time to rest, I gotta, uh, I can't think of it. And I'm, like, for two days, we're screaming at each other, we're like, hey, you wanna leave, you wanna leave, and, uh, but we love each other, and it's because of this stuff that, that we fight. It's not really because of much else, because of these people and their torment and their torture and their voice to skull and her brain telling her, blah, 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 we're going to arrest you and throw them out, blah, blah, blah. And, and the stuff in my brain telling me, kill yourself, kill everybody else, oh, you're never going to make it, you're going to fail, you're going to be homeless, you're going to be this, the marshal's going to come, you're useless, you're helpless, and nobody loves you, and, you know, all that crap. I want to say that there feels like, and the rest of you tell me if you have any inkling of what I speak, that there are times, and I never recognized this before in my life, where I'm, you know, I wake up, or I'm tired or whatever, and I'm going along, and that little voice inside your head, that's your inner dialogue that you use to speak to yourself and, you know, uh, make your mental map of the world around you and you know, talk about how you feel and all that stuff. If that were to shut up, you would see the world as it truly is, all connected and beautiful and, and amazing. But since that thing is in there, we call it the ego, but I have the feeling that it's something else. Because my quote-unquote ego seems to be telling me things that I don't believe, that I wouldn't say. Uh, they get, it gets things wrong. And it's a horrible, violent, evil, mean being, and I don't want to be that. And it's very good at tricking me and fooling me into thinking that that it's me and I'm it, but I know there's a higher me that knows somehow that that voice, that thing, that violent, evil, mean, not caring, selfish, prideful, you know, childlike, demanding, uh, angry, frustrated, frightened, uh, sinful being. I really don't think that that's me anymore, and I don't know how to explain it. Years ago, that thing that I felt was me was different. And it didn't say these kind of things, and it didn't, I don't know. But uh, maybe we've been fooled all along. Maybe all of us have been fooled all along into carrying along something with us that fools us into thinking that, that we're it, and it's us, when in fact, we're not it. It's not us, it's just part of us, it's in there, it's, you know, and how to get rid of this thing, you know, do you want to integrate it, well, you want to understand it, but if it's not you, if this is a foreign thing, you don't want it, man, and there must be some way to rid yourself of, of this, this is, I, I don't know, this information I have seen throughout the last 20 years as though this were part of the plan uh, with music and films and popular media discussing this in many aspects uh, starting with the Pink Floyd Great The Wall because you know, uh, we know that the, the dark side has a requirement almost I think uh, to tell us and show us what it intends to do and that when we do not stand up and say no we do not agree with this, we do not will this in, in the name of God and Yeshua, we, we refuse to allow this and do what's required to not allow it, then evil has gotten our tacit approval. It's some kind of supernatural law of the, the will, I guess. Free will uh, cannot be overridden, but it can be <laughs> subverted and I don't know, that's just my theory. Thank you for watching. Uh, we appreciate your prayers. They really do help. Uh, the 
looking for a place, or, you know, scrambling. I, I got all these papers today and everything. We called a bunch of places, so <sighs> we gotta find one. It'll happen. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. God bless you all, and I pray that this will stop for us, for everyone. That the world will wake up to the truth. One or the other. We gotta work together, we gotta help each other because the powers that be don't seem to be helping.